My name is Peter Riddle, I'm the Commissioner for Public Appointments. My primary role is to regulate the very large number of appointments made by ministers to non-executive positions on the boards of public bodies, um, covering the whole range from education, um, health, to the arts, and to the environment. And in doing that, my responsibility is to ensure that the appointments are made on the basis of fair and open competitions on merit. But I also have a crucial role in trying to champion and uh, increase diversity on the boards of public bodies. There's been quite a lot of progress in appointing women, but there's much less progress on appointing people um, of domestic minorities, and particularly very unsatisfactory progress so far on appointing people with disabilities. Um, it's only about 6 to 7 percent a year goes to people with disabilities, and even fewer become chairs of public bodies. Why do boards of public bodies need to be more diverse, in particular to have more people who declare disabilities on them? Why do we need it? Well, 19% of the population in the UK are disabled. Public bodies are owned by the public, and we need to see that representation. It's, what does that do for the board? Well, we don't just want tokenism. That's important. We've never wanted tokenism, and any any board is not helped by a token appointment from any minority sector. Um, but it does feel a bit weird when you say minority section of the community when you realise it's almost 20%, one in five people. So what are they going to get from it? Well, first of all, they are going to get the representation, they're going to get the understanding of what does it mean to be disabled. So if you are a public body that looks after well, museums, sport, what are the day-to-day -day difficulties that disabled people are facing to access public services, to access their museums, to access sport? What we do see is out in the third sector, um, so in the charity sector, a lot of organisations that are working with disabled people are actually being run by disabled people or disabled people or their carers are, are getting very, very heavily involved. These are the people that really understand what's going on. To not have them representing what's happening is to miss 20% of your population. Whilst I've only been in a wheelchair a few years, I've had problems with health. I had mental health issues when I was younger, um, mainly because I had undiagnosed dyslexia. So I always had this constant battle. And it just meant that from a very young age, I had to deal with um, large multidisciplinary teams around me, people making decisions about me and, and, perhaps, and, and for me but they were in a position of power and so at a very young age I was thrust into this situation where I had to learn to negotiate. I had to learn what's the bigger picture, how can I influence this, how can I do it in a way that's going to get the right, we all want the same outcome. We all want the outcome to be good, we all want the outcome to be positive, maybe we see it at different angles so I had to learn to negotiate that, I had to learn to work with people. That's what I've seen with a lot of the disabled people that I work with, is they really understand how to do teamwork because it is isolating when you're disabled. You can't just go out and do things often very quickly, especially if you require um, a carer. So how do you work with a team early on? How do you negotiate that? There's a really strong, um, strong lesson for anyone. Disabled people just get it much earlier on. Now, what can departments and organisations do more themselves to get the most out of people with disabilities joining their boards? We've talked before about this, and one of the things I've said is, is to recognise that disabled people, especially if they've been disabled for a long time, um, will not have had the same opportunities for career progression. Now, um, it's all very well that we can shake our head and say that's wrong. doesn't matter. That's, that's not the point. We have to be proactive about it. And part of that, that starts right back when, you're, when, when people are applying for work experience. If I'd been a teenager in a wheelchair, or if I'd been deaf, or if I'd been blind, how would that process have worked for me? Because for me to go in for a week, I went in for a week and it turned into, oh, why didn't you stay for the summer? You're enjoying it, we like having you around. Great. That first week was the crucial bit where I arrived early and I left late and I had fun. And I was very little effort for them. If I was blind, if I was deaf, suddenly they're going to have to make sure there's someone around to help. Oh, is that a problem for our health and safety? Health and safety is suddenly involved and everyone just shuts down. They ha they're in a wheelchair. Oh, we're on the second floor. It's not a great, it's an old building. We're in London. It's an old, but we're not really set up for it. 
No. It's just easier to say, sorry, we haven't got anything at the moment. So that you can see how that starts. If I can't go and get that basic experience, what happens when I turn up for a job? But more so, what happens to that person who's applying? Just everyone says no that little bit more. When you're sitting down with your, um, your interview committee, your interview, do they understand where skill sets come from? Very small problems, but minute problems all day, every day, makes a good problem solver. And when you're thinking, well, this, this person hasn't been a director of a, you know, a Fortune 500 or something, yes, but what have they done? How, how, how has that changed? Is there a need for mentoring and support to kind of bridge the life experience yeah. and um, which you very vividly describe and some of the demands of board work. There's always a need for mentoring and support for everyone. And that's just about learning and growth. Um, the more we interact with others with different with difficulties or with different life experiences, the more we learn about them and the more we can appreciate what they're going through. Thank you very much indeed, Matt. If you're interested in finding out more about public appointments, look at the Cabinet Office's website on public appointments, which is updated every week.